Hello everyone, we are going to continue our discussion on the hashing and today's topic will be universal hashing but first we have to finish up a few topics we didn't quite finish in the last lecture so a very quick review first well when we are doing the hashing we are sending a key into a hash function and then the hash function will tell us which slot of the hash table we are going to send our our value to right so in this process well it is quite possible that we are going to have collisions which means we have two keys and then those two keys send to the same hash function and then the hash function tells me for those two keys they belong to the same slot of the hash table and then how are we going to solve that so the very first way is we can do open addressing which means well uh, another name for that is called probing this means if we want to send a key to a specific slot in the hash table and then if this slot has already been taken we move down and we check the next slot and is that been taken if yes we move down and we check the next one we are going to keep on check down until we find a open slot and this is called linear probing and this is probably the easiest probing we can do okay and the next one is called chaining which means instead of using each of the slots as one spot for one key we open up a link list so if we send two keys to the same slot and then this slot will be a the head of a link list so key one sent to this slot and then this starts a link list and the key one will be the first uh, the first node and then later we have key four and the key four come to this node again so key four will be the next node in the link list so well do we still have collisions yes we do but we don't have to worry about that because there will be a link list so after we are sent to a specific link list and then we may have to insert the new node to the link list or if we are doing a search and then we have to do a sequential sequential search on the link list so this is another way that we can solve the collisions so what is the performance of chaining so if we are doing the chaining as a our solution to to solve the collisions do we still have the constant access of the data using a key that is the part we want to pay attention to and to answer that question we first have to know another concept called load factor so load factor is if we have n keys or n n nodes in the hash table and then there are a total of m slots available in the hash table and then the load factor is n divided by m uh, and the point i want to remind you is if since we are doing the chaining well here can we have the load factor even greater than one so think about this so in this example we have a total of 10 slots and then we only have one two three four five six seven eight so we only have eight nodes in this case so if we want to get the load factor of this example that is eight divided by 10 so that is 80 percent which means uh well among those uh, uh, which means well uh, we are probably still in the okay-ish shape right so if we want to have more uh, n value greater than m can we have that the answer is yes since we are doing the chaining and there's no upper bound of the length of a link list right so if we have 10 more nodes and though those nodes are all here in this link list is that doable of course yes so in this case we will have a n value even greater than m which means well the load factor in this case can be greater than one no problem and what is the average cost of a n successful search with the key so if we are considering this case we are doing the we are looking for a k20 for example 
So and for the K20, we we use a hash function and then hash function will point us to a specific slot in the hash table. And then what do we do? We have to visit all the nodes one by one. So for example, if our hash function says, okay, if there is a key 20, the key 20 should belong to this slot. And after that, we have to do a sequential search. We check K5, we check, we check K2, and then K7. And then, ta -da, that is already the end of the linked list. And this means we don't have the K20, right? So in this case, we have to go to a specific slot. And then on this slot, we have to do a sequential search. And what's the worst case? Since it is a unsuccessful search, we visit everything and eventually we say, uh-uh, we don't have a K20 in this link list. Okay, so what is will be the, uh, the average cost of an unsuccessful search? And then that is the one plus alpha. So where does this alpha come from? So alpha is the load factor, right? So let me draw an example here. So we have already got a, uh, a link list and the M is 10 saying we have a total of 10 slots. And then if you can, if you count, there are one, two, three, four, five, there are five values there. So N equals five. And then if you want to check the alpha, alpha is five divided by 10, right? So this means on average, we have for, for the link list, the average length will be one divided by two. And this alpha can be considered as the average length of the linked list possible on this hash table. Okay, so with that being said, so the first step, when we have the K20, so if we have the K20, and then the first step will be we want to do a hash function k20, right? So what is that? So that is o1, because hash function should be fast enough and that is a o1 that we can tell which slot we should do the search. And the number two, well, remember we have to do a sequential search. So that is sequential search on a linked list. And on average, the length of the linked list will be O, will be o alpha, right? So, and then to search on a linked list with alpha as the expected length. And then this will be, this search will be O alpha. So for a search of K20, this is an unsuccessful search. And then we are going to add this part and this part together. So we got O, 1 plus alpha in this case. So this is a proof of how, why in a, a unsuccessful search, and then the time complexity will be O, 1 plus alpha. So let me come back. So the next part is how about a successful search? So if you're search, searching for a value and then this value is indeed in the, in the hash table and then what will this time complexity be? So this will be O, one plus alpha divided by two. So why it is that? Okay, let me come back here. So we are discussing a successful search. So for example, we are searching for the K one. So in this case, we are looking for the K1, okay? So for the first step, we have to do the hash function. So K1, we send K1 to the hash function. This is a constant time again. And for number two, we have to do another search. But for this search, we know K1 is, our, is guaranteed to be somewhere in this linked list. If we are lucky, this is the first one. If we are unlucky, that is the second one, right? And then for this, uh, for this list, we know the expected length is alpha. So this value, the K1 we are looking for, has to be somewhere in the current linked list. And if we take the average case, we only need to search half of the linked list 
before we can find that. So this is the expectation, right? So for this search, well, we are expected to only search for half of the linked list to find the value we are looking for. So that is the alpha divided by two because alpha itself is the expected length of the current linked list. So that is, if we add those two together, we got O, one plus alpha divided by two. So that is for a successful, a successful search, okay? Okay, so that is the expectation of the time for a successful and the unsuccessful search. And for this one, and well, if we take the divided by two as a constant, we can drop that. So no matter it is a successful or unsuccessful search, the cost of a search in a training hash table will be O1 plus alpha. So the next part, well, since, well, uh, if we got the, uh, the time complexity with the alpha as a term, and the next question we want to ask is, how do we consider this alpha? Do we consider this alpha as a constant as well? So you see the blue line. So if the number of the keys in is proportional to the number of the slots in the table, which is alpha, and in this case, well, we are considering n to be a relatively small number compared with m. And then this alpha can be considered as a constant value. And when alpha is already a constant value, and then this O1 plus alpha becomes constant as well. Okay, so this means we can have a, con a constant time search. And this is exactly what we want. However, remember, we have uh, compared with comparing the n, the number of the keys in the hash table versus m, which is how many slots are available in the hash table. n has to be smaller than m. So we can have a constant time searching. Okay, so well, this is the same information and I just put them all together. So no matter it is a successful or unsuccessful search, well, uh, the search the search time cost will be O1 plus a alpha. And if N is proportional to M and then alpha is can be considered as a constant time. And in this case, we can have a constant time search. So before we move on, in this example, uh, if we change the n to 50, okay? So I'm making a crazy change here. So if n is a 50, and then we will have 50 divided by 10. So we will have a 50 divided by 10. And then we will have the alpha as a five. Oh, this is already a lot because we have only 10 slots. However, we have already got 50 items in 30. So what is alpha? It is five, right? So in this case, alpha one plus uh, uh, O one plus alpha will be O one plus five. So that will be O six. And then in this case, this is O one plus alpha divided by two, which is 2.5. Okay, so this is O 3.5. So in this case, my question is, can we consider this still as a constant time lookup or a constant time search? Think about that. So the answer is actually still a yes. So even though the load factor alpha is already higher than one, and in the real in the real time real case real world scenario, this is not recommended. However, well, in this case, well, no matter we are dealing with O6 or O3.5, they are still considered to be a constant time. So let me do something even worse. So instead of 50, we do m squared. 
So if we change the n to m square, and then we do have a real problem. So you can do the math again. So in this case, instead of 5, alpha will be m. So in this case, we are going to have om here, om here. So we, we end up with a linear time search instead of a constant time search. So well, this is the point we said on on this part so if n is proportional to m and then we can consider alpha to be a constant time okay so this is for the analysis of the chaining part and i'm going to see you in the next uh, in the next video we are going to continue discussing how we can design a good hash function okay